So recently on the internet I saw someone who had uh, cut their foot while splitting wood and uh, there was a discussion coming up on X safety and stuff like that so I thought I'd uh, go over some of the basics so when you're swinging an axe you see a lot of people going kind of like this especially beginners they're copying what they've seen in films really that's wasted energy and also makes you less accurate what you want to do is stand square onto the log bring the axe up in front of your nose and um, your feet slightly apart not massively wide like that but just a little bit and not together we will get onto that in a second when you square up to the log like this and uh, you're swinging the axe completely in front of your nose your accuracy is so much better and you have to rely less on instinct it feels very natural so you're bringing the axe up not back far like this this is wasted energy you're wasting a lot of energy trying to lift it back up and it doesn't really increase the speed or power of your hits any more so not behind your head but just above it or in front of it a little bit but uh, never never behind like this when you're swinging your body if it's square on with a log you should hit exactly where you're aiming for and if you're missing it may be you need to move slightly to the left or slightly to the right the point of aim should be your left arm out straight comfortably um, and that's where you're generally going to hit it's much better to go close close to you on the side of the log than over if you're hitting over um, it's very dangerous for your axe handle because you will break it if you ever strike if you're hitting closer um, it helps the wood split better if you hit in the middle your axe gets tends to get stuck more but when you bring it closer to you there is a risk of completely missing the block and the axe skipping through now this is why you put the, the piece of wood on the far side of the block so if the axe does come through it hits the block first although that's not always the case this is a 32 inch handle I'm a very tall guy at 6 foot 4 so if, my, if I aim up here and my axe skips through it might hit that block but there is a hazard of it coming through and hitting me in the shin or foot that's why you keep your legs spread apart if the axe does come through that's kind of a fail safe where it's minimising the risk of injury but it shouldn't come through like that what you should be doing is following through with the axe and keeping the handle parallel with the ground that means that you know the axe will always hit the ground and you do that by bending your legs and keeping that handle parallel not parallel with the top of the log but parallel with the stump or ground if you keep your legs together which can be a you know more comfortable for some people um, it, it's, it's risky because if you do uh, forget to control your handle properly you know you will hit yourself um, and spreading your legs is just kind of like a last resort fail safe many people begin splitting wood with a 36 inch handle which is generally a lot safer with a 36 inch handle because it's longer there's more um, uh, the swings longer so you know it's going to hit the ground more than more likely than not unless you're very very tall taller than me and uh, don't you know stand completely upright so the 36 inch handle is safer now yes it's good to begin with one of them but I do feel um, the 36 inch can lull you into a false sense of security a lot of people start out with a 36 and then buy a new axe particularly the Swedish um, splitting molds and stuff they tend to come with 32s and because they're used to their 36 and being safe they suddenly switch to the, the 32 and then they're not safe 
and they've developed bad habits and gotten pretty relaxed about their safety and all that so I'd say it's generally the people who get injured are the people with some experience of splitting wood particularly with longer handles and then they switch to a shorter handle they're kind of cocky and overconfident they've developed bad habits and that's when that's the group of people I'd say get cut the most particularly with the, the modern um, hobby of bushcraft there's you know a lot of people have been used to splitting wood at home with 36 inch handles suddenly pick up you know short bushcraft axes and they've got those bad habits there and uh, they take out the short handled axe and cut themselves really badly um, like I've seen a guy cut himself really badly in the in the thigh because he's splitting wood and you know with, with this kind of size of handle it's it's really in a dangerous area because if this comes through you're going to hit yourself from the femoral artery which is a uh, you know a minute and a half to bleed out so particularly with the very short like 20 inch handles um, which by the way I do not uh, do not like it's much better to kneel down but uh, kneeling down these kind of handles you lose a lot of power and control and uh, when it comes to tree felling with these I think they're very dangerous because you want to kneel down and cut the cut the tree but you know if you need to move quickly and get out of the way you're struggling to get up so I think these are very dangerous and actually not very useful So again I'll demonstrate with this, so I'm using a short handle, if I bugger up the technique here I'm going to get it in the shin. So I screw up to the log, bring it up and bring it down. Not you pieces. There we go. You should see I'm bending my knees and making sure that handles parallel when it strikes a block. Definitely when you get tired and sort of your back may start to hurt there's a tendency to kind of forget about this and you know get lazy and that's when it skips through you know the axe comes off straight through the log and can really injure you now the other close calls I've had in the past um, Sometimes the axe can glance off something and come through at this sort of angle. Like it kind of scoops through like that. So it will miss the block completely. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, it does sort of happen. And that's why I say don't stand too, too wide because it's not only uncomfortable. But uh, I do feel like there is that risk of glancing kind of an angle outwards and hitting yourself. But it's very rare that happens. That glancing issue can be uh, increased by using a flicking technique. Like that. Basically there's a technique well, as you hit the wood, you twist the axe, and it's very effective on certain woods. It means you're not hitting the block or the ground, and it saves you edge. But I do think it increases the chance of glancing. You sometimes get it so the axe bounces this way or kind of ricochets back, and you know it means that anyone kind of standing near you, which there shouldn't be, um, could get potentially cut. So. It's a technique I use a lot, and I do like, but uh, just something to be aware of. Now how you do that is either experience 
and just judging the right time to twist that handle. But uh, there's a much easier way where if you hold the axe at 45 degrees like that, which feels weird, and just use it straight up and straight down. So I'm not going like this, I'm just holding it at that angle. And you can do that very, very easily. It doesn't take any practice. You can see there I didn't touch the block. So you can use that technique if you want. And you find it works better. But uh, be aware there is an increased chance of glancing, especially on harder woods are found, or knotty woods. If you're splitting wood on the ground, so I want to aim at that piece there. I'm in extreme danger the way I'm doing it right now. That axe can glance off and come into my foot. If you're splitting on the ground, make sure your feet are always beyond. Now if the axe glances off, it won't catch me. Now if you're cutting either logs that are too small to really stand up effectively and hit, um, or wood that you've cut with an axe, it's better to lie it on a log and split this way. These angles are just perfect for making an axe glance. So there's no way you can stand this up on a block or split it that way. Now when you're doing it this way, do be careful that the log's not overhanging like this. You want the end of the log to be on top of the other log, exactly. If it's hanging over like that and you aim for the end of the log, the log can either flick up because the force is flipping it this way into you, or the axe can pass through without hitting the other log and cut you. So. That's the main hazards with that method. Now when it comes to making kindling, um, I do think a shorter axe is much more useful. You can do it with a longer axe, but I just find it certainly a bit unwieldy. And uh, because of the long handle sticking out the back, I feel like it can get caught on things, um, or someone walking past can knock it, or something like that. And you know, if, if the, ha the handle moves at your back, it's going to twist the axe out. So if you're working and that handle gets caught on your clothes or knocked, you know, that can redirect onto your hand. Now, I'm sure a lot of us have seen the video from that woman on the loan who cut herself really badly. And she was basically um, bringing the axe up like that, holding it completely round with her hand. I don't know why. And the axe skips off and cuts a tendon on her thumb. Now I've cut a tendon in my hand, um, not using an axe, but be hanging one, and it's something you don't want to do. It doesn't take a very deep cut, and it's, uh, you know, I got lucky with mine and it recovered fine, but, you know, it can do a lot of, a lot of damage that uh, will never heal properly. So, in general, if you're going to use this technique, um, you want to be very, very accurate and sure of yourself, and you don't hold round, you hold the side and kind of like how a chef uses the knife. But I'm not really a fan of this. I don't uh, particularly like the technique. Now you can just whack away, um, which I'm not going to do with this big axe. Now you can just whack away, um, you know, <clears throat> or you can just sort of set the axe in gently. Which is obviously slower, but I'm not uh, not really a fan of this kind of technique or being cutting kindling fast. You know, I don't cut much kindling, and I don't really 
see the need to do it super fast. I'd rather take the extra five minutes and come home with the intact tendons, you know? Now, that way to split kindling is uh, holding it horizontal over your axe and bang it on the edge of your stump. I find that if you bang it flat on the stump, it doesn't work as good. It's on the edge. And it doesn't take long, you know? You can make a lot, you don't need much kindling unless you're selling the stuff, but so you're just kind of holding it in front of the handle like that. And by doing it at the edge at an angle, it gives you clearance for your hands so you're not banging your knuckles. And if you want to pry with your axe, you see that I have it stuck and I'm prying with the wood, not with the handle. And I feel like this technique you can produce much better kindling, you know. Now about um, other things you can do for your safety, obviously steel toe cap boots are a good idea. Um, I'm just wearing sneakers with a, a chainmail competition sock, but uh, you know, steel, you should have a pair of steel toe cap boots. And if you don't get some, because not only is it good to stop an axe cut, but if you're handling wood, you know, I used to be quite blase about um, steel toe cap boots and all that, but uh, then I dropped a 40 kilogram beech log on my foot, and uh, since then, if I'm handling a lot of firewood, it's particularly large stuff. I will go and put on a pair of steel toe caps. But if you are wearing them, it's important to note, you know, there's a lot of people who have cuts to the side of their foot and, you know, they're standing with their feet kind of angled. And if the axe does come through, your steel toe cap's doing you no good. So you want to have your, your feet square if you're using them because otherwise you're not going to get the benefit. If you have your feet square on, the axe is more likely to be stopped or deflected away from your foot. And I've seen that uh, with a lot of people with pictures of their, the foot they've cut and they're saying, oh, um, I'll wear steel toe caps next time, but uh, it wouldn't have done them any good if they were because, you know, the side of the foot's unprotected on a steel toe cap boot. Now, if you want to see what an axe will do to a, a, a work boot with a you know, leather and uh, a steel shank in the sole and if you cut the side of the foot, even though it's a tough boot I'll put the, the link to that video in the description below so don't be under the impression that a uh, leather work boot will do you any good anyway, I hope this video was useful and uh, it will help um, get you some basic good, good habits and prevent uh, a few cuts at least. You know, axes are very, very dangerous things and especially when you're mucking around with sharp ones. But even a blunt axe can give you a life-changing injury, so better to learn as much as you can and practice and uh, never get cocky or, you know, go beyond your experience. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed.